Hello food eaters and welcome to this episode of Bangers and Ash where we today have changed the backdrop and the format of the show. We are in my garden in Norway where we will hopefully utilize some of the local produce and that's exactly what we're going to do today. We've got some trout caught in the lake right there and we're going to make some fish tacos. But before we get started I need a cooking surface because we don't have anything suitable for filming here uh, so I'll need to build one myself. So now I'll build a table. And here it is. So, now we can get stuck into it. Uh, the first thing we're going to do is to pickle some cabbage. And to do that, you just chop the cabbage finely and put it in a bowl with a lot of salt, massage it well, and let that sit for a few hours. Then you want to make your pickling liquid in a saucepan, add red wine vinegar, some water, some whole juniper berries and black peppercorns, some salt, some sugar, and chuck in a couple of bay leaves, good measure, and bring that to a boil without stirring, and leave it to cool completely. Then, after a few hours with regular massages, you can see that the cabbage has become much softer and has also reduced quite a lot in size. And then you just want to make sure that you drain off all the salt and rinse it under cold water, otherwise you'll have a very salty pickle and no one wants that. Uh, and then you've got your completely cooled pickling liquid and you can just drain that off into the cabbage and make sure that as much of it as possible is submerged. Then you can cover this or jar it ideally and put it in the fridge and just leave that for another few hours and now it's time to go fishing So here we've got the fish, and we're going to wrap that in some tin foil. Take two in each, not overcrowd them. Put them there, and then you just want to create a little parcel. That, add some oil. Just give them a nice rub. And add some dried dill. and some salt and pepper then we're going to add the juice of half a lime to each parcel this was not the juiciest lime in the world and you just rub it in so you get a bit on each side and you're going to wrap this tightly so it doesn't really matter how evenly it's coated but obviously try and get it as evenly as possible 
but I'm going to just wrap them into a little parcel. Like so. And repeat for the other two fish. Right, so when you've got your fish, you want to ideally cook these over open fire. And to do that, we need to build a fire pit, which is really easy. You just dig a hole and place some stones and some more stones and that was your uncle. Right, so here we are. We've got the fire going and what you want to do is just set in for they're quite steady and you can just pop them in here like a little oven. And then they can just sit there for about 10, 10, 15 minutes. They'll be good to go, they cook really quickly. So yeah, they don't need long. Um, yeah, sit back, enjoy the, enjoy the heat from the fire, crack a beer and have a good time. Right, when it's time, just pull them out from the flames where they are warm so maybe you want some some tongs would be great for this <laughs> just fish them out Whew. like that tons of flames right there like that Elegance and grace, live hair, bangers and ash. Right. <laughs> well, that went well. Oh, hi there. So, when your fish is done, just keep it in the foil, let it rest, and in the meantime, you can get cracking on the tortillas. What you need for the tortillas is just flour and some salt that's mixed in here. A uh, bit of oil and some hot water and you just put just a couple of tablespoons of oil in. This is smaller than a tablespoon so I'm going to go for three and a bit. And then might as well just mix that in. And then you want 150 millilitres of warm water. You obviously don't want the water to be boiling because then you burn your fingers off. But you can just start by mixing it in with a spoon and then swap to your fingers after that. And then just knead it in till you get a cohesive dough. The dough will still be warm, that's exactly what you want. And then once it's cohesive and not so sticky, you just puff it up out onto your work surface, keep kneading for about five minutes. So I think without having ever been in Mexico, so I'm not going to claim to be any sort of authority on this, but I think it's quite normal to use corn or maize in tortillas, and this is obviously just wheat flour. Um, but. I think, I mean, you definitely can use this because we're doing it and the police haven't turned up yet, so. I don't know, it's just a big truck with a tractor on the back. Bloody hell! We're in the country now! It's quite a sticky dough, but just work it and work it and work it and then it'll be all right. So now when you've got a smooth little dough ball, you're done kneading, you can cut that into Six equal pieces. Just eyeball it. And then instead of a 
tortilla press, we're going to try this out. And that is an iron that's used to make the Norwegian staple at Christmas, krumkake. So here we've got the krumkake iron. And I have no idea if this will work or not, but we're just going to try it because it's the closest thing we have to a tortilla press. And I, I mean, I guess we could have rolled it out like normal people, but so I think it's a good idea to oil it as well. So we've done that. And this should be boiling hot and then just press it as hard as you physically can. Just a few seconds until you get as flat as possible. And then, okay. Kind of works, but it needs to be a bit flatter. Squeeze it. Yeah. It's a bit thick, but hmm. Yeah, you would probably ideally want that to be a bit thinner. So when you make krumkake, you have a, you almost have a batter. Uh, we might revisit this in episode K. Who knows? But um, you, yeah, you have a more liquid material to put in here. So there's less pressure needed to make it flat. Uh, or maybe I should get a rolling pin. Or maybe I should try once more and just drag it out a bit more when I chuck it on. Oh, it's very f nice and airy though. So maybe we're onto something here. What you do get though is a very nice pattern. So, as you can see, oh, it's hot and not very big. So for the next one, just while you're done, just cover these with a, a towel so you keep a bit of heat in. Just pop them on a plate like that. And for the next one, I've tried to stretch it out so we get a bit more flatness of it. And then I think we can just, let's just squeeze down any edges for good measure. Yeah, and then just let that cook openly. And while that's cooking, we'll just stretch out these, the rest of them, because that seems to be working a bit better and we get a bit more surface area. We've got a lot of fillings to put in here, so we need that, we need that space. And while that is cooking, we are gonna make a mango salsa, courtesy of the local chef icon, that is Bodil Nordjura. And to do that, we needed some mango, some chili, some ginger, some lime, some garlic, some sugar, and some vinegar. And we're gonna blend it separately. And when you puree the mango, you wanna transfer that to a saucepan. Because since the sugar in this we need to bring it to a boil so the sugar dissolves, or at least bring it up in temperature. And if you had a more powerful mixer than this stand mixer, you could probably just give the ginger the same treatment as the mango, but I have used this before and you need stronger stuff for it, the ginger. So just chop it as finely as you can. We've got some garlic. And we'll just crush. That and then just chop it again and then you can make it almost into a puree by just dragging the knife over it. And then I'm just going to put in some red chilli. Chop that as well as finely as possible. And obviously just adjust the amount you put in based on how spicy you like it. One thing I have discovered about using the krumkaka iron to make tortilla is that you want the lid down for a certain amount of period to get the desired browning. But you don't, don't want to keep it down for too long because then it gets stiff. And you want soft tortillas. Well, I want soft tortillas. I don't know what you want. You freaks. And then once you have that, you just mix that together. Bit of lime juice. So, 
If your limes are a bit hard, like this one was, just roll it before you cut it and it becomes much easier to juice. Just the juice of half a lime. One of those. And then some sugar. Not a lot of that either. Just whatever this spoon is. And a bit more. Stir it together and then, as you can see here, the mango is fully pureed, but you got the other bits that are whole in it and that's just makes it a bit nicer than when it's an orangey mush and that's Bodil herself taught me that and she is a definitive authority on food and vineyard looks lovely just bring that over to the the portable hob we got here leave that for only a few minutes doesn't need long that is done chop some tomatoes some avocado here we got some lovely cherry tomatoes just drop them in half. There we go, pop that in there. Oh, this is a nice avocado. Right, for the crema, have some very, the finest, fattiest Norwegian sour cream I could find. Then we're gonna add a tiny bit of mayonnaise. Stir that, the juice of the half of lime. And then we have some chives from the garden. I love chives, so I'm quite heavy handed on it, but uh, you obviously adjust that and you can just use whatever, whatever herbs you want, really. I'm not here to tell you what to do, I'm just here to advise you. But I would advise you to go heavy on the chives because it's very nice with trout. Same goes for dill, also from the garden. Let's chop that. Dill is an absolute winner with especially trout and salmon, but most fish really. I love it. Also grows quite easily in colder climates. Same with chives. And then, of course, because this is a Mexican inspired dish, we can't get around some coriander. Sadly, not from the garden, but we're trying to grow it, but it's gone a bit wonky. It's gone reddish. I don't know what that means. And then you just want to season to taste, just a little pinch of salt and a bit of black pepper. Stir that in, good taste. That's really, really nice. Now, all that's left to do is to debound the fish and then we are ready to eat. With mountain traps like these, as they are very bony, so you need to be quite careful when you do this. This is beautiful, lovely pink meat. One thing my grandfather told me is that the best part of the fish is the eye. And I don't know if he said that to trick me into trying fish eyes, but I thought I'd give that a go and see if that claim was truthful. I mean, it's not bad. But the, the pupil, as you can see here, it's quite hard. Don't know if I'd recommend it, but fish eyes are perfectly palatable. Just be wary of the thin area, because there's a lot of little bones around there. And now, if you watch me closely, you might see perfect bone pull out. You will not see a perfect bone pull out. But, I'd say that's a half adequate bone pull out. Mm. That is really, really nice. The fire gives it such a nice smokiness. And it makes the skin nice and crispy. You can feel the dill, the acidity from the lime. And yeah, if you got access to an open fire and freshly caught trout then I'd highly recommend doing that. Right, now that everything is ready the only thing left to do is to assemble the taco 
and dig in. I'm very excited for this. I'm gonna have some pickled cabbage first. Mmm. And some avocado. Some tomatoes. And the star of the show, the trout. Which is as local as you get it in terms of produce. And I have a healthy amount of trout on. And the crema. And the mango salsa. Just look at that. That is beautiful. I'm very excited for this. This episode has been quite a graft, but I hope you have enjoyed it and I hope you like the new format. If you've got any feedback, constructive or non-constructive criticism, please let me know. There's only one thing left to do. Mmm, that is unbelievable. The acidity of the cabbage, the trout, the mango salsa, and the crema. It's just, it goes really well together. And wholeheartedly recommend it. I think Donald approves too. Don't you, Donald? Hmm? Want some more? Mmm. So yeah, try it out. Let me know what you think. And thank you very much for watching. See you later.